true north, strong and free. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on God for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank Tyler Rushton for the processional music this morning and thank Jocelyn England for leading us in the singing of O Canada. Well done. Mr. President, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen with us here today, and everyone who is joining us via live streaming, on behalf of our graduates, faculty and staff of the Nova Scotia Community College Kings Tech Campus, welcome to the 2015 Convocation Ceremony. My name is Isabel Madeira Voss, and I'm the principal of Kings Tech Campus. And I want to say that we are truly delighted that you were able to join us for this very exciting morning to celebrate the achievements of our graduates from the School of Trades and Technology and the School of Health and Human Services. For we have a very impressive new wave of eager and committed individuals ready to embrace the world of work as they advance their own futures and the futures of our communities. I'd like to begin by introducing our platform guests, and I ask that you hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. So starting on my immediate right, we have John Lohr, our MLA for Kings North, Scott Bryson, our Member of Parliament for Kings Hans, Don Bureau, President of Nova Scotia Community College, Adam LePage, member of NSCC's Board of Governors. Carol Fox, Executive Director, Corporate Relations. Roslyn Penfound, Vice President, Academic. Catherine McLean, Vice President of Learner and College Development. Anna Burke, Vice President of Enrollment and Monica Foster, Vice President of Administrative Services. And starting back, Ian McLeod, Dean of the School of Business and Dean of the School of Applied Arts and New Media. Marlene McClellan, Dean of School of Health and Human Services. Lucy Canary, Dean of the School of Trades and Technology. And Kathleen Allen, Dean of Student Services. John Smith, Manager of Student Services at Kings Tech Campus. Patsy McDonald, College Registrar. Octavia McLennan, Campus Registrar. Don Jardine, Academic Chair for the School of Trades and Technology. And Jadine Sherman, Academic Chair for the School of Health and Human Services. Our platform guests. And seated in the audience on my right are our faculty and staff members whose dedication and commitment has been instrumental in the success of our students. I ask that they stand and be recognized by the graduating class and by all of us here today. Please stand. And I want to 
mention that there are a few members of our campus community, our campus family, who have decided to retire this year. Um, we have Meryl Levy, who's faculty with the School of, of Trades and Technology. And earlier this year, we had Lenny Barkhouse, Beth Crosby, Kobe King, and Peggy Lee Barkhouse retire uh, earlier in the spring. So uh, we want to wish them all the best in their retirement. And also president, uh, present here with us today, we have a few honored guests, starting with the mayor of Wolfville, Jeff Cantwell, um, the warden, Jeff. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, the warden for the municipality of Kings, Diana Brothers, the administrator of Dykeland Lodge, Emily Sampson. Uh, we have retired faculty, Peggy Duncan, and special guest, John McLeod. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> so I'd now like to invite our member of parliament for King's Hands, Scott Bryson, to say a few words. Scott. Th thank you, Isabel, and I'm delighted to be here uh, with you uh, today. And it's such an exciting day, and. Uh, I know it's a very exciting day for families and for parents. Dawn, I think this is a very big day uh, for all of us. And um, I also want to say, uh, as I see people, families that I've known for forever, and their children grow up, and today when I see Emily Taylor go across the stage, I'm going to feel very proud of what a fine young person she has become. And congratulations to Pat. Uh, as, and, and, and I got to tell you, when I think of Pat and, and, and Leon over the years and how close we've been as a family to, and to see Emily graduate today is going to mean a lot to all of us and to me as, as well. But I think sometimes we, we've got 15-month-old daughters now, Rose and Claire, and I think of the future and someday when I see them coming across a stage and, and as they graduate and how important that will be. But I'll give you a little progress on them. They're doing quite well. They're sleeping 12 hours a night. They've been since three months, but well, I say sleep. I can hear them on the monitor. And you can take the batteries out of those monitors, by the way. But we put them to bed at seven at night. At about 6 a.m., Rose starts talking. And I get them out of bed at seven when I'm home. But Rose has talked for an hour, and I walk into the nursery, and she's standing, and she's talking. And Claire is lying down in her crib with her hands over her ears, <laughs> like that. But I figure that anyone who can stand for an hour and talk without saying anything could do well in my line of work at some point <laughs> in the future. See? The world of, of work and learning has changed fundamentally over the last 20 years. The days where you went to college, school, and you got a, a designation, a profession, a trade, and you were set for life, and that's what you would do the rest of your life, has fundamentally changed. Um, the reality is that many of you today may be getting an education the second time you're, you're, you're getting, you've already had one designation, you're back to get another. In five years or 10 years, you may be graduating again in a program, a blended program uh, with more skills. And throughout your lives and careers, as you skill and reskill, Nova Scotia Community College will be a partner. And we are very fortunate in Nova Scotia to have Nova Scotia Community College as such an important part of our economy. It plays an integral role in ensuring that our young people have the skills they need for the jobs of today and will be able to get the skills they need for the jobs of the future. So I want to congratulate each and every one of you for making a great choice in Nova Scotia Community College and good luck to all of you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I'd now like to invite John Lohr, our MLA, uh, Kings Tech, uh, for our MLA for Kings North, to say a few words. 
Thank you, Isabel. It's my uh, pleasure to be here on this auspicious day of graduation and uh, for all you students. I want you to know that uh, as a farmer, I think this is a very, very well-timed rain, a lovely rain. I know that ra rainy days sometimes on big days like this, so you think, oh my goodness, but it's a gorgeous rain for us right now. So um, I want to congratulate you on your um, graduation, the two trades, uh, two uh, human health and the trades are so important in our world today. And, uh, and uh, one, uh, I thought one little bit of advice I would like to give you as students as you go out and set out into the world and embark on a new career is, is something that I have tried, maybe not, not always successfully, to follow myself. And that is the idea that when someone asks you to do something, you should do it. And I always take it as a sign when I'm asked to do something that I'm meant to do it. And I have to have a very good reason not to do it. And uh, so uh, a good reasons not to do it, it wouldn't count, that wouldn't count our, I don't feel like doing it or I don't think I can. So as you go through life and you get asked to do something, this is a little, maybe a little bit of superstition on my part, but I think that's a sign that I'm meant to do it. So when you're asked to help out coaching soccer or, or help out with a community supper or some event as graduates, I hope you will take it as a, a sign that you're meant to do that and, uh, and uh, have a very good reason not to. I've tried, more, not always successfully, of course, but more or less tried to do that myself. And uh, I think it's a good way, maybe you've been taught all sorts of science, maybe this is a bit of superstition on my part, but that, that you take that on and uh, use that as a rule for life. And uh, I hope that you will do so. And again, I'd like to say congratulations uh, on your graduation. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now I'd like to thank, or I'd like to ask the president of the Nova Scotia Community College, Don Bureau, to come forward and address the graduating class. Well, good morning, everyone. When Isabel was introducing the faculty and staff earlier, and she mentioned those individuals that will be retiring, she forgot to mention one person, and that's herself. Isabel is retiring this year after 26 years of committed and excellent service to the Nova Scotia Community College. Isabel, on behalf of the campus and the entire college, please have a wonderful retirement. Please do not be a stranger. And please know we truly appreciate all that you've done for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. As I mentioned, as was mentioned earlier, my name is, <clears throat> excuse me, Don Bureau, and of course I have a tickle in my throat to begin with. <clears throat> and I have the distinct pleasure of being the president of NSCC. And it's a very special honor for me to be standing on this stage this morning to share a few words with you, and in a moment to present you. Thank you. to present you, our graduates, with your certificate or your diploma. But you know, it's an extra special morning for me because you see, my youngest son, Matthew, is graduating this morning from the electrical program here at King's Tech. And it's extra, extra special for me because Matthew's following in the footsteps of his great-grandfather who completed his electrical program exactly 100 years ago to the month in June of 1915. Yeah. Matthew's great-grandfather, my grandfather on my father's side, was born in Belgium in 1896 and came to Canada as a 14-year-old teenager and immediately began to work in the coal mines of his new community of Joggins. And it was there they developed a deep love for all things electrical and all things communications. And together with his new best friend, they began to build homemade radios. Well, on the evening of April 15th, 1912, my grandfather's best friend in the evening and the early morning of that day was listening to one of their homemade radios when he picked up one of the most significant radio signals of all times. It was a distress signal from the Titanic. The next morning, 
my grandfather and his best friend began to tell people in the community of the sinking of this mighty ship, but of course no one believed them. Until the next day when the newspapers began to report the disaster and then the community knew just what happened. Well, a couple days later, while walking home from a late shift at the coal mine, my grandfather came across a magazine that was frozen in a little puddle. And something caught his eye. And he looked at it, and in that magazine, there was an advertisement for a correspondence electrical, electrical course. He chipped the magazine out, took it home, and immediately enrolled. And as I mentioned earlier, he completed the program in June of 1915. So graduates, as I thought about my key message to you this morning, I was reminded of one of the key beliefs that my grandfather lived his life by. And that was, always live your life with intention and impact. And with this came some key success principles that guided him during his 50 plus years of work as an electrician. And I think those principles are as relevant today as they were back then. And I want to, I want to share just two of them with you this morning. The first guiding principle is the notion of passion. You know, it was always very, very evident that my grandfather really, really loved being an electrician because he knew his work mattered and had a great impact on people's lives. He was very creative, he was very innovative, and he was often sought out when complex challenges were being met in the electrical field. And his passion was driven by an entrepreneurial spirit that was rooted deeply in a commitment to do what he believed to be correct. And he often spoke of his admiration for children and a child's passion for and commitment to what they believed in. And this characteristic reminds me of one of my favorite stories. The story goes like this. Many years ago in a grade one class, a little six-year-old girl was at the back of the room doing her favorite activity, which was drawing a picture. And when it was time to move on to the next topic in the class, the teacher asked her to put her picture away. But the little girl kept on drawing and drawing and drawing. The teacher again asked, it's time now to move on to the next topic. But no, the little girl kept her head down and kept focused on her picture. So the teacher went to the back of the class and she asked the little girl, she said, what, what are you drawing? And the little girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher was a bit puzzled and said, well, no one knows what God looks like. And the little girl said, well, they will in a minute. <laughs> Graduates, as you cross this stage this morning, please never stop being driven by that child within you. And please don't be afraid to draw upon your passions, your creativity and your entrepreneurial spirit to commit to what you truly believe in as you help build the economy and quality of life of this amazing province. But as much as my grandfather loved his work, he loved his family even more. Which brings me to the, psych the second guiding principle of life that I learned from this amazing man, which was regardless of what you do or where you do, where you do it, please remember family always comes first. He would often say that a family represents the first place of learning for individuals because family system Systems work like chains, each generation providing a link to the next, thus presenting one of the most powerful tools for lifelong learning. And when speaking about family, he would often repeat one of his favorite quotes. He would say, a person travels the world over in search of what they need, and then they return home to find it. A number of years ago, I read a great article in Success Magazine, and the title caught my attention. The title was simple, it simply said, if you could live your life over again, what would you do differently? Now here's a key interesting aspect. In order to, be about, to have been asked that question, you had to have been over the age of 100. A number of prominent themes emerged, but one key theme always stuck in my mind, and it was if I had to do it all over again, I would have better balance in my life by focusing more on what truly matters my family and other loved ones who have supported me in my success. So graduates, as we come together this morning to celebrate your achievements in acquiring the advanced skills and knowledge that you'll use to help build the economy of tomorrow, our ask is that you please never forget the importance of honoring and nurturing the most important pillar of lifelong success, which is the love and support of those who are most close to you. As I think about this notion of love and support, 
I hope, graduates, you know that there are individuals joining us here this morning who care deeply for you and who are very proud of your success. Whether they are family, friends, amazing NSCC faculty and staff, there are people joining us today who are very, very proud of you. So graduates, I have a bit of a surprise. Uh, you may not realize this, but you're not officially completed your program yet because I have one last assignment for you to do. And that last assignment is I want you to take a moment to think of a person or persons who are joining us today who have been part of your journey of learning that we're here to celebrate this morning. And I ask you to think of that person because we have a tradition at the college where I ask the graduating class to stand up and actually give a wave to somebody in the audience as a way to say thank you. So as your last assignment, please now stand and give a wave to somebody in the audience as a way to say thank you. Please stand up. So thank you, thank you for doing that, and I now can say you have officially completed your programs. Congratulations. And before I conclude, there's one other important group of individual, jo individuals joining us this morning, and that's our alumni. You know, for, alumni, for our decades, our alumni have been using their passions, have been following their dreams, have been balancing work and life in ways to help build the provincial economy and to help build our quality of life. So I want to acknowledge our alumni who are joining us this morning. If you are a past graduate of NSCC or any of our predecessor institutions or schools or are a graduate of CCDP, and folks, I want you to look around and see who's standing up, would you please now stand to be recognized? So in conclusion, and on behalf of the entire college, to the graduating class of 2015, I want to say again, congratulations, and I want you to make me a personal promise. I want you to come up on this stage, and after you get your certificate or diploma, I want you to walk off this stage and go out there and blow the lid off the world. I want to go blow the lid off the world by bringing your passions and your balance in life together so that, so that in a hundred years' time, when your great-grandchild graduates from NSCC, they're going to say they want to be just like you because you rocked the world. Congratulations. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Don Jardine, Academic Chair for the School of Trades and Technology. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates who have completed all the requirements for credentials in the School of Trades and Technology, starting with a certificate in automotive service and repair. For the information of the audience, those students whose names appear in the program, but who are unable to be with us this morning, are automatically admitted to their respective certificates or diplomas. J.P. Anthony. Darian, or Darian? Darian Braun.
Brandon Brenton. Kyle DeCoast Honors. Ryan Eddy. Timothy Fitzgerald. Zachary Hare. It's a gift. Hold on. Dylan Harper. What's it? Hat? Okay. Jonathan Hat. James Hodder. Brennan Kennedy, honors. Caitlin Canock. Kenneth Levy. Jordan O'Neill. Mitchell Parker. Nicholas Rafuse. Kyle Rizzer. Nathan White. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in automotive service and repair. Mr. President, the, the candidates for the certificate in electrical construction and industrial Bradley Cole. Brendan Bennett. Marley Blanchard. James Blumenthal, honors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a tradition in the community college that when a faculty or staff person has a family member graduating, we offer them the opportunity to join us on stage to participate in the ceremony and present the credential. Presenting the certificate this morning, for electrical construction industrial to Matthew Bureau wearing his proud dad's hat is Don Bureau. Stuart Clayfield Honors. John Dauphiny. <laughs> Gary Gessner. <laughs> Blair Hartland. Evan Eisner. Joe. 
Josie. Eric Josie. Tyler Kennedy Harris. Taylor Leslie. Michelle McDonald. Callum McKinnon, honors. Dylan Morris. Esther O'Neill, honors. Jordan Robinson. Braden Schofield. Emily Taylor. Ryan Viner, honors. Alexander Bertrand. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of Electrical Construction and Industrial. Mr. President, the candidates for their certificate in plumbing. Kent Buckler, honors. Christian Carey. <laughs> Cole Cleveland. Mark Gessner. Tyler Landry. Chad Legacy. Kimber Levy. Todd Lightfoot, honors. Steve Maloney. Greg McLean.
Mitchell Schofield. Dylan Tanner. William Tupper. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in plumbing. Mr. President, the candidates for the diploma in carpentry, Jonathan Allen. Avery Arsenal. Brandon Fletcher. Joshua Garrett's honors. Devon Parrish. Jordan Stoddard, honors. Lyle Saunders. Nathan Stevens. <laughs> Gary Warren. Brandon Wood. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of Carpentry. Mr. President, the candidates for the Diploma in Electrical Technician, Andrew Baker. Merrill Collette, Honors. Jordan Camo, honors. Alexander Elderkin. John Harnett. Nathan Hildebrand, honors. Alexander Kelly. Michael 
McLeod. Brenton McInnes. Evan McClellan. John Mitchell, honors. Joel Parrish. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in electrical technician. <laughs> Mr. President, the candidates for the diploma in electronic engineering technician, Wiley Cap Honors. Samuel Durling. Mitch North. Charles Tringle, honors. <laughs> Dylan Wildband. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in electronic engineering technician. <laughs> Mr. President, the candidates for the diploma in heavy duty equipment, truck and transport repair, Randy Burgoyne. Grant Cahill. Jason Connell. Luke Creaser. Alexander Crowder. Justin Doucette. Bailey Eason. Stuart Mosier, honors. Adrian Nickerson.
Zachary Quinn. Jordan Rock. Christian Roy. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in heavy duty equipment, truck and transport repair. <laughs> Mr. President, the candidates for the diploma in horticulture and landscape technology, landscape concentration, Lindsay Boutelier, honors. Sarah Conrad. Savannah Cornelius. Dennis Kraus, honors. Ryan LeBlanc. <laughs> Melissa Lowe, honors. <laughs> Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in horticultural and landscape technology, landscape. Mr. President, the candidates for the diploma in horticulture and landscape technology operations, Aaron Ashley Staples Honors. <laughs> Brittany Billington. Michaela McCammon, honors. <laughs> Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in horticulture, landscape technology, operations. <laughs> Mr. President, the candidates for the diploma in machining, Chelsea, Harris. Christopher Hutt. Jacob Langley, honors. Zachary Langley. Congratulations. Matthew McLean. Liam McLean. Jordan McMillan, co-op.
Brady Persons. Brandon Persons. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in machining. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class, School of Trades and Technology, 2015. Good morning, my name is Jadine Sherman, and I am the academic chair for the School of Health and Human Services at Kings Tech campus. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates who have completed all of the requirements for credentials in the School of Health and Human Services for the Certificate in Continuing Care. Tammy Boyd, honors. Samantha Chambers, honors. <laughs> Melissa Connors, honors. <laughs> Amy Covey. Margaret Crossley. Jacqueline Crowder. Sandra Deatter, honors. Lana Dearman, honors. <laughs> Margaret Fuller, honors. Sean Haggerty, honors. Aaron Harms, honors. Allison Hart. Ruby Herman. <laughs> Angela Hiltz. <laughs> Haley Lake. Haley Lake honors. <laughs> Tashina McKay. <laughs> Kimberly McCartney honors.
Amelia McClellan, Honours. Justin Moore, Honours. Julie Perry, Honours. Michelle Quirk. <laughs> Leslie Robertson, honors. Kimberly Schofield. Jerry Scott Juby, honors. Mariah Smith. Samantha Turnbull. Carol Eufing, honors. Brittany Upshaw. I would like to invite Wade Weatherby, father of Rebecca Weatherby, to come forward to present the next certificate. Rebecca Weatherby. Marilyn Wilson, honors. <laughs> Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in continuing care. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates for the Diploma in Early Childhood Education. Danielle Brown. Caitlin Brown, Honors. Caitlin DeGrace. <laughs> Melissa DeVries. <laughs> Cheryl Dominey. Kenzie Forbes. Caitlin Hiltz. Brittany Ingersoll. Carrie Kennedy Oikel. Darcy Martin. Shelby Nogler. Jenna Oikel.
Emily Phillips. Josie Shearer. Nicole Smith. Deanna Stevens. Morgan Vino. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates in early childhood education. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates for the Diploma in Funeral and Allied Health Services. Matthew Arsenal Honors. Toby Avery, honors. Michael LeBlanc. Corey Lunn. Brianna Marine. Matthew Pickett. Karen Schofield. Brittany Sullivan. Honors. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates, Funeral and Allied Health Services. <laughs> Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates for the Diploma in Human Services, Correctional Services Concentration. Brianna Caterer. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates for the Diploma in Human Services, Disability Supports and Services Concentration. Amanda Baltzer. Sarah Bruce. Amanda Croft. Nancy Dunbar, honors. Christina Eldridge. Dawn Ells, honors. Ryan Hutt. Shannon Jones. Emily Lowe. Cynthia Morse, honors. Jessica Pine.
Lindsay Rand. Leslie Reeves. Jack Robart. Carrie Sabine. Kaylee Sewards. Bethan Strawford. Amber Tebow. Jessica Tool. Cody Ward. Bobby Lynn Worthen, honors. Sheena York. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates, human services. Mr. President, I present to you the following candidates for the Advanced Diploma in Addictions Community Outreach. Rochelle Brown Redden, honors. Ashley DeVoe, honors. Alexandra Hutchison, honors. Jean Marie McMillan. Melissa Matheson. Courtney Meisner, honors. <laughs> Emily Neely, honors. <laughs> Emily Reed, honors. Becky Weitzman, honors. Jennifer Wilson, honors. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates, Advanced Diploma in Addictions Community Outreach. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the class of 2015. Good morning. I'm John Smith, the manager of student services here at the King's Tech. Last evening over at our campus, we held our student award ceremonies. And many of our students were in various programs were recognized for their outstanding achievement and contribution to their class and industry. I would like all those students who received awards last night to please rise and be recognized. It's now my pleasure to uh, invite Matt McLean, please, to return to the stage. He's graduating from the machining program, and he's going to come forward to present the valedictory address to our convocation. And Matt chose NSTC because of its excellent reputation for quality education and hands-on experience. Throughout his training, he has discovered newfound self-confidence and wishes to thank his amazing instructors for their encouragement. Matt will take what he's learned and shape it into a lifelong career in an industry that he's passionate about. NSCC has changed me both inside and outside of the classroom, he says. The opportunities offered to me taught me skills, teamwork, and leadership. And Matt hopes that his fellow students will use the same drive and determination from their NSCC experience to seize whatever goals lay ahead. Please join me in welcoming Matt to the podium. Good morning. Congratulations to all of my fellow graduates. And welcome to all of the friends and family that have helped us reach our success. President Bureau, Principal Madeira Voss, platform guests, faculty and staff. It's truly an honor to have an opportunity to speak to everyone here today. I would like to begin by expressing my gratitude to Neil and the rest of my class for nominating me as valedictorian this year and providing friendships and memories that will last well past the end of the year. Everyone in this room has a story about what brought them here and what carried them through the long road to graduation. I, for one, would not be standing here today if it wasn't for the love and support from my beautiful wife and two little girls. What brought me to NSCC was a desire to have a better life both for myself and for my family. After the arrival of our first baby girl, my wife, Do, enrolled in the business program here at King's Tech. Her journey with NSCC and the doors that it opened for her left me with little doubt of where I would look to better myself. NSCC King's Tech offers a wide range of programs that I had to sort through. I've always had an interest in fixing things and problem solving, and after looking through the trades offered at King's Tech, the machining program sounded exactly like the type of course that I would be suited for. When I started here, like most of you, I wasn't sure what to expect. It had been a while since I'd sat in a classroom, and I think that most people get nervous when they start down a road towards something new. I was surprised with how quickly I would felt comfortable here and I was soon walking into a room full of friends every morning. What I've found during my two years here are instructors that are second to none. They've provided me with technically relevant and experience-based knowledge of the industry that I'm entering into. I've been lucky to be taught by people that feel more a part of the class than an instructor of it. I've found a sense of friendship and family, both in my classmates and in King's Tech as an institution. NSCC has offered me opportunities and experiences 
that have taught me many things outside of the classroom. Joining the student association, peer tutoring, competing in skills competitions are all things that I might not have had the chance to do had I chosen a different school. I think that many people here have the potential to be more than they are if they're handed the right tool at the right time. For me, that tool was King's Tech. As we all continue on with our lives, we'll look back and be proud of the choices and hard work that brought us to NSCC. I'm sure that a lot of you, like myself, struggled at times with putting your life on hold to go back to school and make a change for something new and something more. Today is a time to look back on your struggles and obstacles and triumphs with a smile and say that I did it. Martin Luther King said that intelligence plus character is the true goal of education. I think that we can all say that that's something that we've found here. The memories that you've made, the friends that you've met, your failures and your successes have shaped you into a person who is ready to start down your chosen path with confidence. For the past four years, my family has had a close connection with NSCC, with my wife graduating and then myself. I leave here with nothing but good things to say, and I hope that your journey here has been as fulfilling. The turning point in my life that my education here has brought me is invaluable, and I will always cherish my time here. The graduates in this room from the areas of health and human services and trades and technology will be helping to shape our communities of tomorrow. Let's take what we've been given here at NSCC and work together to make one that we can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. That was a wonderful address. So, graduates, after receiving your credential on stage today, you were presented with your official NSCC alumni pin. After the ceremony and after you return your gown, um, I would ask that you begin wearing your pin with pride, knowing that yesterday you were students, but today you are graduates who will remain forever NSCC alumni. This brings us to the end of our convocation proceedings. We invite everyone to join us um, for a reception at Fountain Hall, which is just up the hill. And I believe it's stopped raining, so <laughs> the walk might be a little easier. Um, and so we'll, we'll uh, meet up there right after the recessional. During the recessional, the front row party led by our president followed by faculty and staff will leave the auditorium and I ask that you please stand as you are able and remain standing until the stage party and graduates have left the auditorium. Thank you.